Hey everybody, so my name is Miranda Ash, and this is going to be my video on an ethical dilemma. While this dilemma isn't something that I experienced personally, it was a real life situation that I witnessed as a student teacher. And so since it involves the, uh, the family and the teacher, due to student confidentiality, I'm not sure exactly how it was resolved, but I figured it would be a good opportunity to use as my hypothetical situation and work through it. So at the end of the video, I'll come back and everybody else's feedback is and how they would handle this situation because I don't necessarily know that there's a right or wrong way to this. It just really depends on um, your viewpoint, I believe. So. So in step one, we define what ethical dilemma means. And for myself, it means compromising in a situation for the greater good of moral standing. The compromise may take the form of choosing something against a personal belief or choosing something in a situation where one or more parties need to sacrifice something in order to achieve the most beneficial outcome overall. In this particular situation, um, one of the fathers came during pickup like usual, but he was very upset. He said that the past few times he had noticed when coming to pick up his son, that his son was engaging in girly activities, and he accused the teacher of essentially trying to make his son gay. So the backstory to this was that this particular student really enjoyed the dramatic play area. He loved being in the kitchen and cooking. He loved dressing up. He would pretend to be his favorite character from a story. He pretend to be a, a famous pop star that he liked to listen to. So it was all part of the play process for him. So the way the schedule was set up, the last 30 minutes or so, the students had free choice of activities. And that was particularly where the student liked to go at the end of the day. Unfortunately to the father, since the father only saw him during that time, I guess it seemed to the father that that's what he was always doing, or he had the impression that he was doing that all day. I feel like it's important to point out point of view in this situation. From the father's perspective, he felt the behavior was inappropriate. He was concerned that his son would be bullied. He said his older brothers were already giving him a hard time about it. Um, and so the father's point of view was coming from a place of concern. And so I believe this situation caused a conflict between two of the major core values, which is that we respect the rights of the family, but that we also value the dignity and worth of each child. So my process when looking at this was to address concern with sincerity, seek to understand the Look at both sides of the issue, consider the role of you as the teacher, refer to the code of ethics, reflect on practices and personal bias, and consider developmentally appropriate practice, and above all else, advocate for the student's best interest. So when deciding this, I really wanted to look at both sides and what may occur, and I kind of created a list of results of what would happen if we remove the student from access to being able to play with those items as well as what would happen to the father if we continue to allow that student to access those items against his request. Unfortunately in this situation I feel that regardless of the choice made one of the relationships will result in getting damaged to some extent either between the teacher and the student or the teacher and the parent. For me to reach step four and take action, I decided that the needs of the student outweigh the needs of the parent. In my decision, I did seek to find ways to compromise for both sides and feel it's perfectly reasonable to remove any unnecessary types of clothing that perpetuate a gender stereotype like Disney costumes and in replace of gender neutral ones that focus on real life careers. Um, there were Disney costumes in this particular classroom, um, and I feel like it's perfectly within reason that those aren't provided. That being said, I feel the student should have the right to continue to have the choice of how and where he plays during free activities. Kitchen theme and dramatic play area will remain as is and accessible to all students, and John will not be discriminated against for selecting any of the developmentally appropriate materials provided in the room. While John will be encouraged, he will not be prevented or forced from trying different activities. The decision that I came to is based on my study and understanding of developmentally appropriate practice, as well as how the Code of Ethics guided us. I've posted um, some of the ideals and principles that led me to this decision, as you'll see above and on the next slide. 
amongst the ones that I've posted up here, it was principle 1.3 that cemented my decision, which states we shall not participate in practices that discriminate against children by denying benefits, giving special advantages, or excluding them from programs or activities on the basis of their sex. So for me, that made it a non-negotiable at that point. That being said, I feel that it's very important to be equal and fair to the side of the family. So I'm also posting the ideals and principles that I felt applied to our code of ethics and how we work with our families in this situation. Um, ideal 2.6 really caused the biggest conflict for me when trying to decide what to do. And this really is just a tough situation because I feel for both sides. And if we follow the code of ethics as how it pertains to our families, it says that we have to respect the right to the ways that families want to raise their children. But in a situation like this, it directly affects the success of that child and that child's choices. So it's, it's really tough. And so for step four, reflecting, I think it's important to consider personal bias, the code of ethics, additional resources, which is why I'm about to share a video that I think is very important to this discussion. And remember the family involvement. And did I really engage with this family? Were they informed on the process of early childhood and what to expect before they enrolled their child? I think there's some really important practices to look at moving forward. Part of the reflection process for me was to go back and review previous literature and seek out additional sources um, to self-educate myself as well as to kind of gauge where my ideals align and how they fall in place with best practices. According to Vygotsky and Cole, children make sense of the world around them through imagination, play, observation, imitating, and relating to one another as well as adults. So creating a learning environment that encourages healthy gender development is part of that process. According to the American Psychological Association, children do not have the understanding of how their choices may be commonly associated with one gender or another. From a teacher point of view, these kinds of choices are part of healthy child development. This is how children express their developing sense of self. Dr. Rafferty tells us that all children need the opportunity to explore different gender roles. However, in the sake of being able to represent both sides, the upcoming video, I feel this preschool teacher does a really good job at looking from both point of views, both from a teacher, the child development point of view, and a parental concern. Wear opposite gender clothing or play with opposite gender toys. I think that it's okay in early childhood as children are discovering themselves and building their identity to cross over with girl toys and boy toys. I think that a lot of times children will gravitate towards certain opposite gender toys or clothes, um, not out of any issue that's going on or because they think that they are a girl or a boy, but because of their experimenting with their own identity. As children move into age four, they start to separate their genders. They start to realize, I'm a boy, you are a girl. If your child continues to play with these toys and these clothes, it might be worth seeking an outside professional's advice. And I, I say that because if this is something that your child's going to do lifelong, it's going to be something that they're going to have to learn to do lifelong. It's going to be something that they're going to have to learn to deal with lifelong. And what does that mean for your child in a school setting when children in grade school might begin to tease, how are you as a family going to help your child to cope with this? So now that we've kind of got to go over the dilemma together, I'm really curious to see what you guys think and if anybody would have done it differently or have any other suggestions because it is a real uh, sensitive topic, I feel. I included the, the uh, clip of the teacher at the end because she does look at both sides. On one hand, we know that developmentally this is appropriate and this is what we expect young children to do. But she also brought up the point that as they do transition into elementary school, um, that may be cause for concern only because we do worry about our kids being bullied or being seen differently And I feel like that's the space where the father was coming from even if he was upset and wasn't maybe able to articulate that in the best way So I'm really trying to look at both sides here and understand it from both sides. I don't want to 
get in the way of development or take away from the student's right or free choice, but I also respect the parent's decision and concern. So what do you guys think of the situation?